Hi, right, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And this is part two, I believe. Well, I think, yeah, of course it's part two. I've only done one other one. Um, so this is part two, and where we left off was this uh, cylinder sleeve um, that we basically just put together in no amount of time whatsoever. So we get rid of all that, and as you can see, you he planes, it doesn't matter how much you move them and all the rest of it. Um, they just do what they want regardless. So, uh, what I want to do is talk about a few other little shapes that you can do. So, uh, we're going to go with revolved at the moment because that basically gives you a bit more freedom. Um, so what we're going to do is pick a centre line like we always do. And uh, we're going to do a, a sphere. So when you want to make like a ball bearing or something like that. You'd think you just do that and away you go. So then if we try and revolve that, as you can see, it just makes a ball. No problem whatsoever. And SolidWorks just back, it basically says that to you. You've got uh, and it goes hang about, it intersects. The reason why is because we are trying to spin this 180 and then through itself again. So if you put 180 here, like so, you'll get half a sphere and then it'll say it's intersecting again. So you're like, whoa, what the hell's going on? I don't understand. The reason why is because when you say 380, uh, 180 or 360, it is rotating this, in, so if we just pick this half, it's rotating this 180 to here, but there's already a circle here. So now when you do 360, it's trying to pass through itself. When you do 180, it's really doing 360 and then chopping that in half. So we can't do that. What we need to do is we need to stop this basically spinning through itself. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to go back to sketch and we need to get a line and we need to go from the top of our circle to the bottom of our circle like so and then chop it in half. We literally need to do this. So this is where a circle and a cross section are two different things when it comes to the revolve. We'll just make like 50 for nice big numbers. Now when we do the revolve, so we do the revolve now, as you can see, it's basically split spinning this shape through 360. And when we say yes, booyah, we have a ball. So you've got to be basically aware that one, sometimes um, in the future, you've got to be aware of how SolidWorks actually tries to work these things out. It might seem like it's normal, but it's actually quite not. So one of the other things you have to do is every time you try and revolve physical uh, or basically you know, entire bulk material through its center line, you have to do that line to basically split it in two. So if we delete this and we start again, let's just say we want to revolve um, quite a complex shape, but it's a shaft. So we will start with our center line first and there is loads of ways that you can click and loads of shortcuts you can do when you change from lines to center lines. You can change your lines from straight lines to then curves. Um, but I'm not going to confuse you with that just yet. Um, you can see that there's all these yellow lines and you can probably hardly ever see them. These are the lines that help you line things up. You don't have to use them. Um, you know, you don't have to use them whatsoever so if we come down to here and we want to put a ball end on this then what you do is you find your center point like that and then you come like so and you cut this off and if you do that you'll notice if you try and cut that away it'll disappear that's because it's got nothing there is nothing apart from this one point if we put our set up oh, not if we put our center line in we've already got our center line idiot we get our center line drag this through now when we cut and this is to closest line when we cut this it will stop at these intersections and there again now when we try and extrude this you'll see we just come up to our center line we not extrude when we try to revolve this it'll say that it's not a closed section but it's weird how there it doesn't really care so this is what you have to be aware of with SolidWorks is sometimes it cares sometimes it doesn't as you can see there it's filled this in with a line it basically asked me if I wanted to fill that in. I said yes, but if we delete that again, go back to sketch, uh, exit sketch and rebuild anyway. Um, if we go back to this, you can see there that it hasn't got a line 
and then when we tell it we want to um, exit that it'll say oh there's a problem it'll say show us the problem and it'll say that this this is the failing of SolidWorks it'll show you the problem but there is no problem apart from the fact that we haven't made it a solid uh, geometry so if we do that all of a sudden it hasn't got its knickers in a twist now things that you can do it depends how you want to do them um, you can put uh, bevels and chamfers and fillets and stuff on things so the fillet tool which is in the features lets you add fillets to things uh, internal and external and you just basically give it the radius size which used to be here and now it's here which really pisses me off on 2017 if you've got previous to 2017 you'll see it says here there'll be a box on this you basically have to tamper with this like so and just change the radii like that so 15 we can go even bigger and when it blanks out like that it means that these two are now intersecting each other so you can't have that you know basically these are starting to eat into each other you can do one after the other if you want to and there you can see we've got this profile another thing you can do to check on what you're doing when you're evolving stuff especially if you've got quite complicated parts is here there is the section tool so you tell it to do a cross section and you go yes this is basically a cross sectional view we'll talk about cross sections later because they're really quite uh, useful especially when you want to do engine design and stuff like that um, but this really isn't a face these are faces you can see they get highlighted in blue uh, when we're not touching bloody planes um, you can see that these face these surfaces and you've got to touch this one it doesn't allow you that's because it's a fictitious surface um, but you can see the shapes that you can automatically start to employ uh, with SolidWorks um, so if we just I like to hide the planes because they get quite annoying you can just highlight them like this um, so if we want to do a revolve boss and just say we want to do something like we want to make a valve there's a few ways we can do this we can either start with the middle of the valve we can use the origin as the middle we can use it as the head of the valve or we can use it as the tip of the valve it all depends what you want to do with this now there is a few ways we can do this again like normal we can just do um, a revolve or we can do an extrude I will do a revolve just because um, it gives us a bit more control and the way you do it is there's no real proper way to do it, you can, like I'm using a rectangular tool here um, and you just basically just have to start having a stab at it and you can always change things so what I generally tend to do is draw um, what I want and I don't want that on a curve I generally want draw what I want to do. Um, I basically get lines down. What am I doing? I'm not even paying attention. I'm trying to talk and do everything at once. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to draw what I want first, like this, and then mess around with it later. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and get that line there and intersect that with our base. And then once I have these, I can then just start moving stuff around until I think, nah, that looks right. And then once I've done that, then I can start dimensioning it. So I want this valve to be not that big, 100 tall. Now, if you notice that nothing's changed, nothing has changed because none of this was dimensioned. So it had decided that this was a metre tall, but it wasn't just because of what I've been sketching. Um, Here's the other feature when we talk about, um, where is it, that one, uh, we're just doing thickness, and you've got to remember that this is a radius, uh, this is a radius, not a diameter, so we want a 8mm diameter, so we'll do 4, that's fine, um, and we just basically go around just defining exactly what we think should be what, and then once you've got a basic shape, um, oops, no, can't do that. We're asking it to do two things. Uh, oh, yeah, head, head diameter, that's it. So, head diameter will go 50. And you see that that's because at 50, there we go. Our circle is basically going absolutely mental because there's nothing defining it whatsoever. Um, and as you see, that these two points. Um, are free floating so everything just wobbles around in exactly the way you don't want it to go until you start defining things um, so one of the things we have to do is we have to get our, our valve seat cut 
we want that to be 45 degrees so we say 45 degrees in there so at least that kind of defines that we know that this point is two millimeters up uh, vertical and then we know this is 45 degrees the only thing we don't have here is the actual length of this valve face there is no length to this and when we move this, you can see it just starts jumping around everywhere. You can undercut the valve like so. But we'll leave something like that, and then we'll give this a radius. And generally what I do is, if it looks about right, I'll just keep it what that is, as it is there. Now you'll see that this hasn't gone blue yet, and this is because it has no defined points. So there's a defined point. If we define that, and then we define that one, that will give us these two point locations we know the radius so we know where the curve has to start and where it has to stop basic stuff like that uh, we need a center line you can actually i'll show you actually a trick of that you don't have to use a center line if it's something like this like a valve then it, this line that we've added is like it's just it's just picked it for us so there you can see you've got a valve and then you look at that and you go oh my god do you know what's wrong with that it's not tall enough that looks nothing like my valve that, and if you're starting with a valve. So again, you can edit sketch. And this is why you have to define things. Because what we can do is quite easily and quite quickly, we can just add that much. And it doesn't change the characteristic of the valve. Like so. Now, talking about defining positions and all the rest of it, the next thing we want to do is we want to put a recess in this valve for the collet. So it's basically just a squared shoulder like this. So it's relatively quite simple. The depth of it, just say we've already calculated what this is, and this is 1.5 millimeters depth um, from this actual outside wall. And we say, right, we're gonna go from origin again. And we are going to say, right, from the base of this valve to this collet, it's 135 millimeters. And we'll say the depth there to there the depth of this is six millimeters we'll go with that all is gravy all is good so now when we exit this what's wrong with oh i know what's wrong with it <laughs> you need to cut away that line so we need to cut away that there we go there we go and then when we revolve that buff there we go we've got a collet now this is where it comes uh, this is where it's really important of what you reference off what it's all right smart dimensioning everything off everything um, you know the closest stuff that you want to the problem here is is that we've defined this collet length from this dimension so imagine if we put our valve in and our valve is 20 millimeters short than it should be well we go into sketch and we go right 20 millimeters uh, it's, it's 20 millimeters too long so we go right we can do the 150 minus 20 whoops minus 20 like that if we wanted to or we can put 130 in doesn't really matter we do that and then we go yep yeah. and it goes hang about there's a problem we're like oh what the fuck has gone on here and when you actually look at it we've actually gone beyond the borders of our valve is 130 but our collet is meant to be a hundred collet recess is 135 so we get rid of that and then we do this and it all disappears and we're like what the hell has gone on now sometimes it's obvious with this right now but sometimes when you start editing things it's not obvious what goes wrong and then it all loses its coherence and turns into absolute shit so what we need to do is you've got to be very wary of where you reference things from so what we need to do instead is reference just one of these surfaces from there so that's nine millimeters that's good Right, so when we have that, there's our normal valve, and then when we come into edit it, and we want to say, right, that needs to go down to 130, we go down to 130, and it is still 9 millimeters from that surface. So that's why it's important. We need to reference things from where we think they're going to be you know, adjusted, so to speak. Um, and you've also got to be careful again when you, you know, when you start changing things. It's like using things um, from the origin which usually generally isn't that bad because the origin is like zero 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 that's how solid works no it knows where it is so this is um that's basically it for now you know that's a valve that was quite easy that's quite simple the next thing we're going to do in the next video is concentrate on how to re remove material from things using the revolve cut and the extruded cut and all the rest of it and things you have to pay attention to 
And then we'll get on to stuff like uh, the hole wizard. The hole wizard's quite cool, you know, about doing tapping, drilling, slotting, stuff like that. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.